Calculator Basics, Part 3. Um, in the last two videos, we learned how to uh, evaluate this function using the regular calculator mode, and then we also learned how to find a table of values and generate this entire list um, much more efficiently than having to enter everything in one at a time. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to learn how to graph a function, and basically, uh, with our table, we get a, a discrete list, a specific list of, um, of values of the function for every specific values of x. When we graph, we could actually see all of the solutions to this function equation, all in one clear picture. But again, to do that, we have to know a little bit about how the function calculator works and, um, and, and what we're supposed to be getting, what kind of numbers we're supposed to be getting out of here. So to explain first, uh, we go to y equals and enter in the function, just as we did before, same function, uh, making sure the stat plots are off. And then uh, most people would think that the next logical thing to do would be to hit graph. So when I hit graph, this is what happens. Uh, so far, nothing. Oh, there we got something, and there's something else. So what I can see is there's uh, there's some values here, um, but there's some stuff happening up here that I can't see, and there's really nothing happening to the left and nothing happening to the right. The reason is because the default setting for your calculator's graph window is going from x equals negative 10 all the way up to x equals positive 10, counting by ones, and then the y goes from negative 10 all the way up to positive 10, counting by ones. If some of our solutions are not within that viewing window, it's not going to show up. We're not going to see it. For example, when x is 0, y is 14. The point 0, 14 is right about there, and I can't see that. So we have to make adjustments or modifications to our viewing window. To do so, it's as simple as hitting the window key, and we can see our negative 10 to 10. Um, I don't need that much negativity on the x's, so I'm going to go to, say, negative 5, and then uh, um, going up to, say, 8 just just based off the picture that I saw before. And here, um, I can see some negative values, so I'm going to make sure that I include um, some negative numbers in my y value. So this is y min, the smallest y value on the, x, on the y axis. And then the largest should definitely go above 14. I'm going to go up to like 20 just to make sure that I can see everything that I need to see. Now, for x scale and y scale, that's just going to tell you how often do the hash marks pop up. So, since we're going from negative 8 to 20, we're going to have like 28 little hash marks all squeezed into this screen. So, if we go change this to uh, fives, then, then the y-axis values are going to count by fives. So, um, I just hit graph now, and we're going to get a much clearer picture. Now, this is all of the visible solutions to this particular function exist on this curve. Now, what we can do with this graph, um, it's amazing uh, some of the things that we can do, and those are going to come up in some later lessons. But for now, I just want to show you um, how we can evaluate and see the solutions on the graph. So we learned that when x was negative 2, y was negative 4. If you go to calculate, which is, again, it's in blue, so we go second, trace, to calculate, and choose option 1, value, we can evaluate the function for any values of x. So here it's asking x equals, we put negative 2, hit enter, and it'll show you the y value, negative 2, negative 4, and show you the location of that solution relative to all of the other solutions. So if I was looking for the highest points on the graph and I started with value of x equals negative 2, um, I know that I should make x a little bit larger, and that's going to make the y's get bigger too. So I can just write it now, manually enter negative 1 for x, hit enter. Now it shows that when x is negative 1, y is 7, so it's quite a jump. And I can put in 2... And that gives me this point, y equals 16. The highest point happened somewhere in between the y-intercept and x equals 2. I'm going to try 1.5 just to see. Almost to the top, y equals 17. Um, maybe we'll be like a little bit, like 1.75 or something. Anyway, you see the points. I can actually evaluate and see. That was dumb. 1.25. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be the highest part of the graph right there. So 17.125 is the largest value of the range. The y values will never get higher than 17.125 or 17 and 1 eighth. So um, this is how you graph. Now, if we had a different function, so I don't have any uh, function to display, but suppose I had a different function to graph, um, I'll just put in um, the square root, which is above the square. So I hit second square, and I get a square root. Um, and then we're going to say, uh, I'm thinking... 196 minus x squared. I just want to see what this is going to look like. First thing I do is I hit graph, 
and I can see there's some stuff going on here but once again the graph appears to be going off to the right and off to the left but I can definitely see that it's going up and then down again so I'm going to adjust my viewing window uh, we're going to go all the way over to negative 20 and a positive 20 and negative 2. Now I chose these values because I know what the function is going to look like but here we go All right, so I chose this particular function. You notice it's actually a semicircle. It's a half a circle. Um, and it looks like the function is not actually reaching the x-axis. However, um, sorry, I just needed to check something. Yeah. Um, we find that if we go to calculate value and I make x equal to 14, that y equals 0. So here you can actually see that there is a solution, 14, 0, and it's kind of on the graph, but it's not connected in my calculator. That's a flaw in the graphing calculator. So we can't trust everything we see. We have to know a little bit of something that we're studying in order to be able to be clear about what kind of graph that we're getting here. So we need to know a little bit about mathematics to know how to set up our viewing window and we need to know a little bit about mathematics to know that when we should trust and when we should not trust the displays that we see. Incidentally, if I chose to change my viewing window from negative, uh, oops, not negative, from 13 to 15, for my x's. Now my x-axis is only going from 13 to 15. Um, and then I choose to uh, make my y-max just go to negative 2. Oops, positive 2. Now let's just clear it, make it a 2. And graph. Hopefully you'll see something. There it is. Now you can see the graph is getting closer to the x-axis. But I have to zoom in and it still doesn't even look like it completely touches even though 14, 0 is a value. Again, I'll prove it. 14, 0 is there, but it just didn't show up on the graph. So um, that's uh, using the graphing mode on the calculator, and that takes some practice. Again, learning what kind of functions and what to expect from the graph, learning what viewing window to put in. Those are all things that we're going to have to develop over time through practice. But at least in terms of what buttons we push, that's how you make a graph before we learn how to make a table, and before that we learn how to use the uh, standard operating mode of the calculator. So enjoy. Have a great day. Okay.